everybody, I am Scotty J. Welcome back to Rock Titan Live. We've got an awesome guest with us today. This guy has been part of just a, a, a very dynamic metal band for a long, long time. Like a lot of these musicians, you know, despite the legacy that they have with other projects that they've worked on, they decide that they need to kind of venture out, do a little bit of self-exploration, and you know, create something different, create something new. And that is exactly what my next guest has done. We got Mitch Harris. He's got his brand new band, Brave the Cold. But of course, you know him from Napalm Death. And uh, it's been a few years, but we're going to talk about that maybe a little bit. But uh, we're going to talk about everything he's got going on with Dirk from Megadeth, man. Mitch, how are you, sir? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. So it's been wild, man. So you've been back in the States for how long now after being in England all that time? Almost six years. I mean, time flew. Man, did fly. Did you miss it? Um, England, I miss the people, the friends, yeah, family, um, the weather, not so much. <laughs> That's what I hear, man. You know, yeah, I mean, you deal with it as you do. We were gone most of the time, so <laughs> you know, what can you do? But yes, you know, I miss my friends in Napalm, I miss seeing people on tour, yeah, um, yeah. you know. Yeah. Traveling, I don't miss that much, but you know, especially the current state of what's going on. But um, oh my god, I know. is politics is cra we're not going to talk politics, but just out of curiosity, is is politics as crazy over there in the UK as it has been over here in the United States for say like the last five years, basically? Yeah, well, the Brexit thing. I mean, I haven't kept up with it that much, okay. but my daughter does tell me where it's going, and uh, it's left them kind of isolated from the rest of the world, so they're in a tricky spot. And, you know, it's, I think division is happening in all countries, really. It's everywhere, globally. And it's like, you know, a, a thing as diverse as the corona. It's sad, happened. isn't it? Yeah. But, you know, the problem is it's neighbor versus neighbor now. You know. Isn't that And terrible? I think that's on a worldwide scale. It's kind of a media blackout. We don't really know what's going on everywhere at the same time. Right. Right. Like, we're fed so much bullshit. We forgot what horse shit tastes like. <laughs> Oh, that's a good way to put it, but I would expect nothing less from a songwriter like yourself. So, you know, speaking of which, all right, so we're going to talk Brave the Cold because that's what you've got coming out. You've got uh, everything coming out digitally on October 2nd, but the hard copy stuff, I guess, not going to be coming out till December 11th. But one thing we kind of touched on a little bit, you know, early on in our conversation, and we don't have to get into this a lot, but I, as a journalist, was confused, and I think you understand a lot of the confusion too. But again, like I talked about, your whole fan base knows you, you know, as being the longtime guitarist for Napalm Death. You were with them for a very, very long time. And then I guess there was some news some years back that uh, you were going to be taking a little bit of a break, you know, for your own reasons and stuff like that. But then, then I see that Napalm Death just like literally within the last two weeks released their brand new album, Throws of Joy in the Jaws of Defeatism, and you were given guitar credits on that. And so I'm thinking, oh... Is Mitch back? Is he not back? Yeah. What's the situation? I flew over and did guitars. Okay. Basically. All I right. was there for a week. Shane had so much material. You know, I saved my material for Brave the Cold in the end. Long story short, I wanted to help my bros. Right. I wanted to see my friends and family. But, it that, was a great, but, but that's all you. Yeah. That is all you. And Russ Russell. Okay. He's one of my closest people. Right on. And, uh, I can't see a Napalm record without him. I mean, I miss working with him as well. Sure. Thankfully, Logan, Logan Mater did a great job on Brave the Cold here, too. And my friend Hugo recorded, helped with the tracking, and it's just been a fun experience. I did both albums at the same time, okay. which is kind of weird. I was going to ask you that because I'm like, wow, they're coming out in such quick succession to one another. You Did you, in fact, work on them at the same time? So the answer is yes. Yeah, it was two years ago, more actually, just wow. after my mom died. She's like, I want you to do the Napalm album and Brave the Cold and do your own thing. Do it. Follow your music and just make it happen. So soon after, you know, I got back to work. Me and Dirk started jamming and then they sent me over to England to do that. I'm glad I brushed up on guitar. I mean, I've been playing, but not like, you know, like I used to. I like the amount of time or every day, you know what I mean? I write when I do, but suddenly I was in better shape for the Napalm record, which was good because it was more physically demanding, actually. Break the Cole's a little more, I don't know, vocal driven. I mean, they, the riffs are there, but it's not super tricky, complicated, you know, 16th album type of shit. <laughs> it's like old school fun. Let's have fun. Right. You know, right. And I had fun with the Napalm, too, because it's important. 
It's part of my life, man. So, so I'm curious. You, you brought up your parents, and again, you know, I, I'm I'm very sorry about your parents' condolences. I'm glad you could be home. I'm very, very glad you could be home for them. That is awesome. But uh, what did they think of your music, man? Because grindcore, you know, obviously yeah. that's more our. It's obviously it's our generation, but like. For your parents' generation, for my parents' generation, they're like, that's not music. You know, I mean, they grew up with jazz. They, you know, it was like 40s, 50s, 60s music, you know? So, so <laughs> right? So, what did they think of all your work with Napalm Death? Well, before that, I had Righteous Pigs and Defecation, too. Okay. So, I mean, okay. it doesn't matter. I'm not saying no disrespect to Napalm. All my bands, anything I've ever done. Okay. Mitchell, I like the music, but I can't understand the words. <laughs> We've all heard it growing up, but it was part of life. You know, for us, it was evolution. We saw, I mean, you know, as a kid, I went through my parents' records collections, anything from the Beatles, Kiss, Pink Floyd, uh, David Bowie, B-52s, and getting into Kiss and Zeppelin and Sabbath and Priest and Maiden, and I can't name all the bands, but then Venom, Slayer, Exodus, Metallica, all that stuff. And it's like, and it was like, as a kid, I just saw it going faster and faster. I wanted to see it get heavier and crazy as can be. Where's it going? So I, I followed that direction and, you know, creator, cryptic slaughter, destruction, just DRI, whatever, F SOD, just all the stuff that was the next step in evolution. So they, they were my influences combined. And that's kind of like where my guitar sound comes from okay. everything from the old school or whatever i knew at one point i'd venture back and want to do something more dynamic more like the i love pink floyd so much the wall was the first album i ever bought so i was into deep concepts i was eight years old reading the lyrics to the wall just trying to understand what the fuck is this about <laughs> and uh yeah. empty spaces the backwards message and i was and the wall in the movie i was like i like the depth of concept there so that's always been part of my somehow to get into this deep ass shit where that didn't rely on a gimmick or you know no disrespect to bands with a gimmick or if, if there was like satanism or politics or whatever the fuck it is if it's theatrical stage gear or whatever it's like i always did my own thing didn't care and musically yeah my parents they understood it they believed it you know they were like where's the money you know i was like i'm gonna be a <laughs> That's I'm gonna cool. be a i've decided you know i finished high school and they're like go to college i was like yeah okay but I want to do this now. I'm already have an album out when I was in high school, Righteous Pigs, and we had stuff in Europe. No one would touch it in America. And I knew that I had, to, there were so many bands I was inspired by. I wanted to see what life was like, where they came from. Why are there so many great bands from Birmingham? Why so many bands from Essen, Germany? And there must have been something, industrial society or something. The water, I don't know. I had to see it. And then out of nowhere, Napalm asked me to join. And uh, I was like, okay, well, you know, I had two weeks to get my shit together. I finished the second Righteous Pigs album and then uh, basically flew there with a one-way ticket. And I was like 18. I was like, parent, my parents, I had a dinner. I, it was actually right here. And my aunt and uncle were there. And I was like, I want your blessing, you know, because I'm, I'm going to do this. They're like, how are you going to do that? Where are you, you going to stay? You have no money. I got a one-way ticket. I had 600 bucks from selling my car and I went. Oh my God. Uh, I hope this shit was going to work out. I figured two or three albums. What band did two or three albums back then? <laughs> you know, 16 albums later, I'm like, holy shit, man. My parents are getting old. But they were like, you know, this kind of music, I mean, what are you going to do? It's never going to be on the radio. And it wasn't. It's like it's non commercial. The one probably most successful band in history that had no commercial airplay whatsoever. And that came from years and years of hard work, blood, sweat, and sacrifice, you know. And, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, shit, it was a vision. And, you know, we all agreed on it. We, we all, like me, Jesse, Danny, Shane, and Barney, we just basically dedicated our lives to this thing, shared it with the community. And when I see people that are fans, you call them fans, I, they're community. These are friends to me. We grew up together, man. We oh. shared something and it's a way of life. It's like an institution, you know, and Brave the Cold is part of that. The, the, the extension of Napalm Death of every band from Carcass to Godflesh. I'm not going to name them all, but it's there. It's part of, it's important to know the dynamics of where it comes from and where it's going. It's 2020. Well, and I, I pray the cold fits that picture. It's not just old school for the sake of it. I mean, I want to hear what you think. 
Well, <laughs> I, well, I could go through. I don't want to bore the audience with my review. I'm going to put that out on RockTitan.tv. So everybody, after you're done watching this interview with Mitch, go out to RockTitan.tv, not .com, not .org, not .net. RockTitan.tv, and you will be able to see uh, my entire uh, review of scarcity. So, uh, yeah. But now, one thing I will say, one thing I will say, Mitch, is that I heard so many different influences, like in your vocals, like from track to track. Yeah, there was a lot of consistency. I thought it was very interesting the way it was produced. Were you the only vocals on that album? Because it sounded like you had three different vocalists at times on the album. Yeah, I did all the vocals. You did all of it. No, no, Dirk, Dirk didn't do any of the back vocals or any of that. I would have loved for him to do some. He wasn't there when I was doing vocals, unfortunately. But wow. I mean, we, I'm, in Napalm, I'm known I did the high screams, you know. I did a band called Menace where there was all clean vocals too, which went over people's heads. But to me, I'm very proud of that record. So Napalm, Utilitarian, we did this song, The Wolf I Feed where I tried a clean part and I, did Barney liked what I did on the verses and my, my voice was there. Cause it's different when it's mixed in with Barney cause he's got the ultimate lows and my highs kind of complement each other. So it's a good dynamic. But my screams on an entire album of 45 minutes is gonna be, to me, it would bore the shit out of me. But that, and, that's what you know. threw me off. That's what threw me off because listening to it, I'm just like, so I hear your, you know, kind of high pitched screams, your high pitched howls and whatnot. But then there are these lows. You know, and then there's like some, you know, Gregorian chant, you know, and like a couple of those tracks I, I felt I picked up on. But uh, I, so I thought that was very interesting. That being said, how much influence with all the years you spent with Barney, how much influence did he have on your vocals, if any at all? Well, that guy, the best thing about Barney is when you hear Barney, you instantly know it's Napalm Death. <laughs> right. Oh, that's cool. And yeah, he's got such a deep voice. And it's great. And it's like my, my vo even my deepest voice is probably like a mid range compared to his, <laughs> but there's no need for that in the napalm thing. I mean, even if it was in the albums, it was mixed in, you didn't actually notice it just reinforced what was there, but it was a f the first time where actually it needed something, you know, to break it, to give dynamics basically. So I searched, it didn't like, it wasn't like instant, like, Oh, all of a sudden I could sing like this. I, I worked hard to find a, a different way to use your chest or whatever, you know, from advice from Hugo and Logan and, you know, and I'd find like three solid voices and be like, okay, well that's enough to break up the song and keep it interesting. And uh, yeah, I mean, and, and that is one of the most interesting things I think about the album that you hear like your different vocals in there to the point where it's, it definitely sounds like it's more than just, what people might be familiar with you, you know, like with backing vocals that you've done in the past and stuff like that. But uh, that's cool. But oh. the good thing about it for me is that it also shows other influences that I grew up with that bands that I loved and respected, which is in there. It's in all part of the secret sauce. Are you a Motorhead fan? Always. Because I know yeah. I heard some. Did I? Would it be fair for me to say that I thought I heard some Lemmy in there? Oh, there's a bit of Flemmy. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. Me, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I heard some, man. I definitely heard some. And he always sang with his mic like this, and then I, I wound up doing that live with Napalm too because I found it easier to hold the screams higher for longer. So yeah, he inspired me in a way. Of course, you know we all have different vocal styles, but sure. Necromatrix. So, that's the one I was thinking of specifically. Necromatrix. That's where I thought I heard some of that Motorhead Lemmy kind of uh, inspiration. So. Yeah, and there's a bit of Scott Carlson in there too from Repulsion. Yeah, right on, man. Right on. So, uh, Brave the Cold, it's just you and Dirk. Is that correct? It's just the two of you. Yeah. I mean, at this point, man, when you got a killer drummer to work with and you do vocals yourself, I'm, I love playing bass. I love fucking bass. I mean, Napalm, we've been known for distorted bass, and I've always loved Celtic Frost's bass sound. Okay. It's like the guitar is tuned to E. It's got it's super mid and they barely even mute the guitar, but the fucking bass makes it heavy. And like, I tried for that bass tone, but it doesn't, it's impossible, man. It's like, it's just the way they did it. It's mixed really loud. And with us, you know, we want guitars louder. So, but it's got the sub bass and I, I wound up, um, I had this old four string bass that I bought when I was like 17. 
I was looking at buying something that's modern bass, a five string or whatever. And I was like, hold on, my bass is mahogany. I bought it for 125 bucks. So I bought a five string set and I jammed the thickest fucking string in for the E and I tuned it down a bit so the neck didn't break. And, uh, and I was recording and I could see the WAV files like losing, as I'm playing it like I would on guitar, it lost some power. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to play everything on the E string. Even if it's high, I just played it up to keep the consistency. And I don't know if anyone will notice, but Personally, there's a nice, it fills the space good. And yeah, I've always wanted to play bass, you know, on the record and I've done it here and there. And sometimes it's the less communication, the better. Me and Dirk don't need to talk about shit. I show him an example. He knows what to do. I know what to do. We're hoping that I'm going to pull it off vocally. And then the bass, yeah, that was fun, man. I did that from home and spent some time on it. And yeah, I mean, fuck. sometimes the less, less is more, <laughs> right on. you know? Right on. Yeah. And again, you know, when we mentioned Dirk, we're, you know, we're talking about soil work. We're talking about Megadeth. Uh, so how long have you known Dirk, man? How, how, what what made you guys pair up for this? Did you go to him? Did he come to you as far as Brave the Cold goes? Like, how'd that happen? We met. I can't even remember what year it was, but, you know, I mean, we toured so much in Europe. At some point, he was in Belgium and in Sweden, and he was always just a really nice guy. And like Shane was working with him on some stuff. He's like, man, Dirk's so awesome, you know? Like, as I send him tracks, he sends them back the next day. It's always fucking killer. So, but we used to email each other because he's just into fucking music. You know, he's got a collection. He still has all his vinyl. He gets it. I was there at his house. I had to sign a bunch of stuff. I thought it was so cool. <laughs> you know, know he's, you know, the real deal, underground dude. He loves it all. And also modern progressive music, everything. He's a drum teacher. He's a fucking genius. Right. So, just emailing each other. I'm like, I don't know, man. I got a bunch of songs and shit. If you want to play in a couple, here's a few to listen to. And he was like, fuck yeah, dude, let's do it. Because at one point I was like, I don't know. What do I do? Because I like to work with friends, man. It's not about like, oh, he's the most talented guy or he's in a popular band. I don't give a shit. It's like how you get along with people. You know, that's how we choose the Napalm lineup too. It's like, it's a family, you know, it's a marriage. It's got and me. yeah, so it was basically, he picked up on 12 tracks and, I was like, holy shit, world killer. So yeah, he wanted to record in LA. He had his drum kit there. So he had a friend, Adair, who had a studio there, which Dirk was kind of helped him build as well. You know, they kind of work together and he does some Megadeth tracking or rehearse. I don't know what they do, but I went there and we just, yeah, we had four or five days together and we finished kind of early. I was like, dude, there's still these songs, you know, let's just, what do you think? And so we spent another day, we did, did like another two days, maybe did six more songs. And now we have enough for an EP as well. The album, I didn't want it to be over long, overly long, overly experimental. I hate that word experimental. It's not experimental. It's only experimental when it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. But it's still kind of varied that people can't get their head on. And like, if you can't put a name on it, if you can't call it grindcore, if you can't, sort of categorize it, then people just get confused or they lose interest. Attention span, thanks to TikTok, is uh, one minute nowadays. So if you can get someone to listen to a 30 minute album, it's a fucking miracle. If you can get someone to click on a link, holy sheep shit, you know? <laughs> but thanks for that, you know, we'll push the shit. It's gonna be hard to get people's attention. Oh, another project. I mean, to me, it's not a project. Nothing's a project. Right. You put 100% energy in, it's fun. And it's like, if something comes of it, great. But it's an album. I put the same amount of energy into a Napalm album as I do anything I do. It's not a project. It's your life. It's part of it. It's art. Hopefully it relates to people, especially the fact that the current lyrics that happened by chance just from years of research. I like to write about post-apocalypse stuff, dystopia, end of the world type of shit, like a message to humanity. What's, you know, where we went wrong, basically. And it's all in there and somehow very current. Yeah. It's yeah. Now, I mean, I gather that shallow depth, refuge, upheaval, dead feed, apparatus, retrograde, hallmark of tyranny. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I really enjoyed it. I did. I really enjoyed it. So everybody, again, we're here with uh, Mitch Harris and we're talking about his band, Brave the Cold which is just him and Dirk. And uh, they got Scarcity coming out October 2nd digitally, but the hard copy uh, material is going to be out December 11th. So it's just the two of you. You played guitar. You did the singing. You did the bass. Dirk's on drums. How in the world would you guys do this live? You just get a bass player. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now you were, t- you were you know. so, so you're talking about liking to play with your friends, liking to play with guys that you work with before. Have you and Dirk already thought about who you pluck out of uh, you know any of these other bands that you guys have worked with to uh, hold down the bass? So you would play guitar, you wouldn't play bass, you wouldn't you wouldn't bring in a guitarist per se. It would be you. Well, singing I mean, I thought song. of that okay. initially. I would love to just fucking sing and run around like a freak. Okay, you know. It's a man, it's cool playing and singing, but after a while, you know, you could go over here for a minute and then you back to the vocals. And it's like, it's to watch, yes, maybe impressive musically, but it's not the energy. I want free hands to do this shit. But then, you know, people will come expecting me to see me play guitar and be that's a bit of a downer. So I don't know. Okay. Maybe both, or maybe take a break for a minute, maybe have two guitars, but it, it would be friends. And it would be fun. Dirk's going to be busy with Megadeth, too, when the world opens up. So we'll see. He already said, hey, bro, if you want to bring another drummer in, do what you got to do. Okay. Never say never. But the funny thing is, uh, Braid the Call and Scarcity was about, kind of started with the cryptocurrency idea and the fact that um, autonomy, an autonomous community where everything is moderated and taxed and regulated, um, commodities like water, agriculture, food, electricity, gas is made scarce. They raise the price up. It creates poverty, ends the middle class. And the cryptocurrency thing, you know, in the stimulus package, they said there's going to be a digital dollar. It's already been approved. So it's coming. But the thing is, the weird thing is when I talk to my friends, like I'm tired of typing brave the coal. I just type BTC. Aha. So if you type BTC online, you're going to get Google search results for Bitcoin. And that was a coincidence. I was like, dude. Wow, that's interesting, man. That's like secret code. We could see. Yeah. I mean, it happened one night on Christmas Eve. I went out for milk and it was fucking freezing and windy in Birmingham. And I was like, oh, it's time to brave the cold. I was like, oh, that's a cool title. So I, I was thinking of a name for the band. I was going through old song titles that might be a cool representation to, to build on. But I, that was a song I'd never used. In fact, it's a song as well. I, it started as a song. Okay. It's going to be on the EP. So it's like, we are Metallica. No, I'm just kidding. Right. But Brave the Cold. So when yeah. you were talking about the EP a little bit ago, because you got 11 tracks on Brave the, or uh, on Scarcity, so you've already got plans in the works for release. Is the EP actually done? Yeah, I mean, it was done in the same session. So it's another oh, four songs. Wow. Okay. Three maybe. The title track, which I decided not to put on the record, just to be a <laughs> underground little week. Yeah. No, in fact, it's not my favorite track. It has cool moments, but it's not definitive of the band to me. It's not, I don't, it just is what it is. <laughs> and, you know, I like to get to pick and choose what goes on an album and run through the order with Dirk and how we feel it flows together. So that, that's actually fun. It can be kind of complicated the more people that are involved. Right on, and, right on. That's cool. That's cool. So, uh, well, I know you got to get going. And Mitch, it's been awesome talking to you, man. I really appreciate you joining me on the show today. I know we had some technical issues early on, but I'm so glad we caught up, man. Excellent. Yeah, For sure. Very cool. You, you're going to miss those uh, winners over there in Birmingham? Can't say that I would. <laughs> you're not going to get any of that in Vegas. It's cold at night. It gets below, well, not, you know, below 32, below, you know, freezing. And it's, it gets fucking cold, man. Does it really? It'll be 60, 70 in the day and it drops 30 degrees at sunset. So it's weird. It's just not wet, which is better for my bones. You know, right, it's yeah, a dry yeah. time. Yeah, right on, right on. So, all right. So we can't get over with 2020 soon enough. You know, we're gonna we're gonna part with this 2020, man. We just gotta get this baby over and done with, so we can get into 2021. And hopefully, everything is not even remotely similar to what the hell we had in 2020. But for you, um, are what what's the plan? What's next? Because you got this live music that's coming out. Is there any hope that your fans might see you with Napalm Death again? Or no, your focus is going to be on Brave the Cold. And barring what Dirk's schedule is with Megadeth, is there the chance that you guys are going to go out? Is that kind of like, where's your head at? I never say never. You know, with the Napalm thing, um, not in the immediate in not in the immediate future. Okay. And, uh, you know, when they get back, it's going to be hard for everybody. I'll, before I, I go anywhere... I'm going to see other bands test the water. Sorry, but it's going to be really hard out there. You'll probably be better off doing open air festivals to start with. Who knows what it's going to be like. But at the moment, I'm technically content. Um, 
all shit storms aside, it's like, I'm happy. Good. And, uh, you know, traveling with kid, when you have a family, it's really, I, you know, there were long periods of time I was fucking miserable. Yeah. Just fucking miserable. Nothing to do with music or bandmates or nothing. Just the lifestyle. It gets to a point where you got to take control of your life, your schedule, and like pull shit back together. You can see everything just falling apart. It's like even marriage is a long distance relationship when you're in a touring band. It's it's hard. Yeah. And I'm happy. I don't know uh, what to do work wise here. I have a few things in the pipeline. We'll see. For now, I'm just thankful to get some material out and hopefully it benefits somebody in a psychological way that inspires them and, you know, creates a kind of energy and bond that can last a lifetime, you know? Right on, right on. Well, everybody, again, I'm Scotty J. You're watching Rock Titan Live. And if you enjoyed this podcast with Mitch Harris here, which I have no doubt that you absolutely did, make sure you go out to our YouTube channel and subscribe. YouTube.com forward slash Rock Titan. That's it. Rock Titan. Just as it sounds. And uh, definitely be looking for uh, Brave the Cold's new album, Scarcity, because you're going to hear Mitch in a whole new way. His vocals are really, really good. I mean, his guitar playing, you already know it's good. But, <laughs> man, his vocals... Totally different, man. This is a different sound. And I think that uh, the chemistry between you and Dirk, man, it is pretty, pretty awesome, man. I wish you a lot of success with this band, man. This, uh, I, I, I hope, I hope it's got the, some, some long life. And obviously I've heard, you know, this new album, Scarcity, haven't heard the EP. Uh, when might the EP come out? Have you thought about that? Hard to say. Yeah, it'll be out in 2021 at some 2021. point. 2021. All right. So it's going to be a 2021 release date. But there is, there are six videos which have been approved that I edited some existing footage of animation from directors worldwide. And they've been really supportive to our cause. And okay. uh, it creates a different picture. It's a visual album, technically. There's more to come. It's like whether I get approval or not. You know, people might get sick of another video, another video, who cares, you know, but there's really an underlying storyline that enfor reinforces the lyrics. Um, I'm excited about it. There'll be a new video probably this Friday with the launch of the digital album, Blind Eye. And uh, yep. it's crazy when you see some of these videos, how they work, it's like it was, they were made for each other. And um, Very cool. I'm really happy. And it keeps me busy artistically. I love editing videos. Me there's too. always a vision there and I, I have a chance to build on it and it's just, nothing but fun to me yeah no, I agree. Me to share around and you know hopefully people see a deeper side than just you know listening to their freaking mp3 on their earbuds play that shit loud and you know feel it man read the lyrics with the album like you used to in the old days you know yeah right i know talk about attention spans that you were mentioning earlier you know but, yeah, but uh, the artwork, artwork i'm so happy with man he did it in like three days a fucking miracle that's awesome that's yeah, very, very cool triple safe Awesome. Cool. They're from Peru and they're just fucking amazing. Nice. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to working together more. Nice, man. Well, everybody, again, make sure you go check out Brave the Cold's Scarcity. It's out in just a few days. So go check that out because Mitch tears it up on that. But also, if you didn't catch Napalm Death's last album that Mitch also does play the guitar on, um, that is Throws of Joy and the Jaws of Defeatism. That is the longest damn album title I think I've ever heard. That is tough to get off, man. I have to read that, man, because I can't remember it all, and it's a tongue twister to boot. But uh, I was like, I was dead set on a one word title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot, man. But everyone, go check that out from Napalm Death too, because uh, I heard that, and that's pretty killer as well. But uh, again, Mitch, thank you so much. And, uh, you. you know, please enjoy your family time. Enjoy it and uh, stay Thank safe, you. stay healthy out there. And uh, yeah, Vegas. Same for everybody watching, listening. Yeah, yeah, everybody be cool because we want 2021 to be like, let's get back to some sense of normalcy. You know, 2020 has sucked without a doubt. But 2020, 2021, it's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. And uh, I'm Scotty J, Rock Titan Live here with Mitch Harris. Thank we're, you. We're out. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.